MTV, at one time the cultural epicenter for many genres of music and a showcasing of some of the best that rock, metal, alternative, and much more in the world of music had to offer. Now, it's the home of ridiculousness. Lots of ridiculousness. Seriously, MTV has years of original content over the decades to show, and this is what they stick with. Whatever, music's dead to them, I guess. Some of the younger generations may rarely tune into MTV or even basic cable, but for decades, MTV revolved around music and music videos. Heavy music definitely got their attention as well back in the day. That means the bands and artists wanted to stand out with their music video and did a lot to cross that undefined line with their art. MTV did not always like that, believe it or not. So this video is going to look at 10 music videos in rock, alternative, and metal banned by MTV. Keep in mind, YouTube will not allow me to play full, uninterrupted clips. I'll show what I can, but cannot show everything, especially as some of it is a bit vulgar for YouTube. So if you want to watch the full videos, there is a direct link to each video below in the description. This is not a top 10, no ranking. The videos will be shown in chronological order of when released to keep it easy. You know how these videos work. Let's get to it. Starting off with a band on their debut album, Duran Duran was making a video for their third single, Girls on Film, from their titular album. At the same time, MTV was just barely starting. So what happens when Duran Duran tries to go significantly more provocative and titillating than other music videos at the time? MTV panicked and banned the video hard. The network refused flat out to air it. The extended, uncut music video running over six minutes was intended to be played in clubs and venues. The original intention wasn't for basic cable. When you know that, it's easy to understand why Duran Duran wanted lots of scantily clad women in random situations in a catwalk boxing ring combo. BBC also banned the full version and would not air the cut video for years. MTV would eventually release the ban, and this was only the start of the wild evolution of MTV being terrified of showing too much to years later when they heavily relied on the raunchy and lewd in place of anything, including music. Lemmy is God, and Motorhead has no problem getting crude and violent. So much so that in 1983, Killed by Death was deemed unairable due to the video having, quote, excessive and senseless violence. Ironically, I have to be careful of what I show here on YouTube because now YouTube flags and blocks violent imagery, and yeah, Motorhead delivers it here. Middle fingers, cops shooting at Lemmy on a motorcycle and by a riot squad, Lemmy getting the chair. Motorhead was proud to provide a video of living and dying through the rock and roll lifestyle, including coming back from the grave to hop back on the same motorcycle to ride off with your girl. MTV didn't like any of this. I'm pretty sure YouTube doesn't like it either, but when you see the video, it's completely tame and only suggestive. Don't feel too bad for the group though, because getting banned from MTV for this probably made them all the more prouder of the video, so it worked out for everyone. I want to break free. Queen, one of my favorite bands of all time and a band that loved to push buttons. The video for I Wanna Break Free in 1982 was no exception. Queen actually had several music videos banned for one reason or another by MTV in the early 80s, but what was it that caused the video to get the ax? The band dressed as ladies. That's it. That's literally it. Cross-dressing was a serious topic that MTV did not want to encourage. It's not even the whole music video either, as Freddie and the band were wearing other clothing. But how dare the band wear ladies' garments? That troublemaker Freddie Mercury with his... Ugh. Mustache. Yeah. This music video is on par with 80s sitcoms and male stars dressing up as women for a hilarious laugh track. But when Queen did it, MTV refused to allow it for their righteous, wholesome airwaves. Keep in mind, though, this was the 80s, and any man that was not portrayed as completely masculine was deemed questionable to air. That sounds like a joke, but this was a big thing for a long time. Be cruel to your school, cause you may never get enough. Hey kids, school sucks! Yeah, that's a big reason why parents in the 80s deemed Twisted Sister and rock in general as evil. In 1985, Twisted Sister got Alice Cooper to help out with the song and Bobcat Goldthwait to act in a zombie-filled high school where everyone is brainless and how we should be cruel to our school in the name of rock and roll. The full horror music video does get pretty intense with living students getting sacrificed to rock? Whatever, it's 80s horror and rock. Sounds awesome, right? MTV said hard out of this for many reasons. The message, the violence, and it's a shame because everyone missed out on what the musical version of The Walking Dead would have looked like if made in 1985. To quote Mr. D. Snyder, our videos are simply meant to be cartoons with human actors. Seems obvious, but those religious moms in the 80s wouldn't take that as an excuse. Well done, pro-censorship of the Reagan era. You sure accomplished... something. 
Megadeth and Dave Mustaine have never shied away from some controversial topics in their music, and in 1987, Megadeth started their legacy of having music videos banned from the network with In My Darkest Hour. And when it's when you see the music video, you only see a band playing live on stage to a crowd of headbangers. That's it. Why in the world was something like this banned? Because of the content and meaning of the song. MTV was not okay with the meaning and message of In My Darkest Hour, which MTV saw as it being okay to take your own life. Dave Mustaine defended the song for years as being inspired by Cliff Burton, but MTV held their ground and said there was no way this song would corrupt the youth on their network. MTV would let other songs do that in the future and not be metal, but Megadeth was seen as rebellious and pro-death for ridiculous reasons, from the name Megadeth to just being a metal band. That's all you needed to be seen as a tool of the devil in the 80s. This video was a prime target of metal is corrupting the youth. Dirty metalheads. It's one thing to be crude, suggestive, or violent, but it's a totally different crime to go against the world of advertising. Neil Young made a statement about massive musicians and celebrities working for advertisers in the late 80s, and MTV was legitimately terrified by this because the network was afraid of advertisers pulling out and therefore losing revenue. Neil Young got pretty vicious in the video, to be fair, poking fun at Michael Jackson's hair catching on fire, and then taking shots at poor old Spuds McKenzie. When you hear the song, though, it's completely tame. It's just a joke track with a message about Neil Young not selling to commercialism. MTV was not having any of that. Long before Neil Young took on Spotify, the man took on Pepsi, Budweiser, any massive advertising campaign in general. Neil Young's video was banned, Young wrote a public letter calling MTV executives spineless jerks, and then the music video would win best video at the VMAs that year. MTV, able to support music videos and the almighty dollar. Arguably my favorite Soundgarden song, Jesus Christ Pose helped put Soundgarden on the map, and MTV was not as helpful as they could have been. In 1991, graphic religious imagery was the deciding factor that's got Soundgarden's music video banned, despite the song not being an attack on Christianity or anything overtly religious. Chris Cornell did many interviews talking about how televangelists were exploiting the symbols of Christianity, and how so many were using something sacred to make money. That's what the song Jesus Christ Pose is about. MTV wouldn't hear it back in the early 90s, saw the name of the song and Christ figures getting crucified in the video, and MTV refused to air the clip. The meaning behind Jesus Christ pose is strong and not an attack on Christianity, but rather defending it and calling out exploitation. But you would have to listen to Chris Cornell and the meaning of the song, and MTV had no time for that. MTV would eventually ease up on air the video later in the 90s as Soundgarden continued to go platinum, and they saw they were a bit too harsh. Most of you clicking on this video probably knew Nine Inch Nails was coming on the list, and Trent Reznor in 1994 went out of his way to terrify every suit wearer in MTV boardrooms. Closer is infamous for its lyrics alone, but add a music video with graphic imagery, animals alive and deceased, religious imagery, uncensored skin, and the full video of Closer was banned almost instantly. A heavily censored version of the video would later air blacking out much of the content and got creative with scene missing title cards, which only had people wanting to watch the directors cut even more. MTV censoring the video drove more people to Nine Inch Nails. To this day, Closer still is lauded with praise for an unnerving horror film vibe. MTV worked with Reznor and director Mark Romanek to get the video to work on MTV, and for those wondering about the animals, there was an ASPCA member on set to make sure no animals were hurt and they were all taken care of. In fact, the monkey got paid better than some of the staff on the video. So, good job. After the Smashing Pumpkins dominated the 90s, Billy Corgan and company would go on in a different direction with a new song in Try Try Try, and go on even further with a 15-minute music video directed by Jonas Eckerland. I'm sure I mispronounced that, I apologize. The video is not a feel-good viewing as it follows an addicted couple begging, stealing, and going to extremes. The abbreviated 5-minute version was still deemed too graphic and inappropriate as it had visible showings of narcotic use, which was big no-nos for MTV for obvious reasons. The music video is well done, and even if the music is oddly dreamy for this type of video content, still creepily connects. Sometimes art goes too far in execution, but at the same time, I'm not sure Corgan was worried about getting MTV video airplay for this one. It was a project he wanted to do. Also, I can see why in the year 2000, where things were brighter and happier, that this would have been seen as a downer. 
banned or not. Before we get to the last music video, please hit the like button below if you've been enjoying this so far. It helps to know if people actually like what I'm putting out. Thank you. All right, time to offend the hillbillies. Wrapping up the list in 2003, Foo Fighters are beloved. Dave Grohl has been a rock icon for decades. How could MTV have banned a Foo Fighters video? Well, you add Jack Black, a skeezy hotel, and then you just let the camera roll while they both pretend to be rednecks. Whatever you are imagining right now is probably correct. Once the lingerie got busted out and these guys got really into character, that's when MTV drew the line hard. The debauchery was seen as too much even by 2003 standards and got banned from airplay completely. It's kind of a shame because this is all clearly a joke, but... I also imagine Viacom employees at the time not feeling too comfortable with seeing what hillbillies do on the weekend. Guitarist Chris Shiflett did an interview about the music video back then, saying that Dave's a big man to let the world see him in that way. It's a sign of Dave Grohl you've never seen before. I mean, yeah, he's right. There are a few rock stars who are willing to be seen putting on lingerie and rolling around in a dirty hotel bed. Or at least on camera. And that was a look at 10 music videos banned by MTV. Know of another music video that got banned? Leave a comment, let everyone know. Big thanks to my patrons and a special thanks to Chris Stoneman and Dom Noble. You can have a say in upcoming videos, get weekly new music playlists, and see videos early by supporting Rocked on Patreon. Click the link in the video description to get perks by supporting the channel. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified for upcoming videos, and you can keep up to date with Rocks on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. This video was my attempt at a back in my day music was on the TV! type video for you all. Hopefully that came through okay.